Good morning. Welcome to everyone. Welcome, especially, I know we have visitors, we have guests. Thank you for coming. If I'm new to you, because you're new to us, I'm Dan Pavel. I teach theology at Concordia University, and it's always been a pleasure to come here. Pastor Groth is just now starting his vacation, and so uh, he is off, and uh, you're stuck with me. Now, <laughs> one, one word of, of warning. Uh, those who know my musical talent know that there are certain limits there. In fact, Pastor Growth said, Dan, I'm going to work in a lot of music for you to, to sing and to lead. See, you're smiling already. I wrote him back. I'm kind of proud of this one. I wrote him back and said, I've been practicing. I got one note down really good. I'm working on the other one, but that's the limit, so plan accordingly. Well, I'll speak and you can sing, and we'll get through the, just fine. It'll all be good. Let's begin with our first hymn, 590. We turn to page 167, Divine Service. We read the responsibly, the invocation, confession, and hear the absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. 
We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sin. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the source of all that is just and good, nourish in us every virtue, and bring to completion every good intent, that we may grow in grace and bring forth the fruit of good works, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Our Old Testament reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 4. Now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the just decrees that I am teaching you, and do them that you may live, and go in and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. You shall not add to the word that I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you. Keep them and do them, for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us, whenever we call upon him? And what great nation is there that has statutes and just decrees so righteous as all this law that I set before you today? Only take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Our gradual is from Psalm 34. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them all. Our epistle is from Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may, n that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, Keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Jesus called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him, but the things that come out of a person are what defile him. And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart, but his stomach, and is expelled? Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, But what comes out of a person is what defiles him. For with, from within, out of the heart of a man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for our hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is the whole of the epistle lesson, Ephesians chapter 6. We hear just now verses 11 and 12. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Here ends our text. Dear Christian friends, have you been talking to each other about the weather lately? Has this been the center of your, your attention, your focus? And your competition. We had five inches. That's nothing. We had seven. Oh, and, that's all. and it goes on, doesn't it? <gasps> There's been a lot of talk about weather. Now, where's my question? Have you done anything about the weather? Well, have you done a little something? Oh, for instance, Holly and I walked past the generator section at Home Depot in Kohler. That's right by where we live. Not a single generator in the whole store. Sold out. They have brochures, but no generators. People are trying to do something about the weather. Do you know what the weather is? Do you do something about it? I kind of sound like your mother. Don't you know what the weather is? Well then dress appropriately and isn't that what Paul is saying? Do you know what the spiritual weather is? If not right now, do you see the forecast? Can you see the clouds building up on the horizon? Well then, put on the whole armor of God. Dress appropriately for what you can see is coming. We've had a lot of that in this last week here. Let's see how it's a timeless truth also for Paul. We're going to start off simply by knowing what's coming. You know, I live with 20-year-olds at the university all day, every day. They are a wonderful age to be with. They really are. I love asking in different times and settings, when do you know you've grown up? You're an adult. And, of course, at 20, they're certain they've grown up. They're adults. That's good. So when do you know you grew up? When I know enough to put away my own dishes and wash them. Oh, that's good, that's good, that's good. When my mother no longer has to do my laundry. Oh, there you go. And by the way, half of them are going, oh, that hasn't happened to me yet, but maybe someday. <laughs> da, da, da. Oh, these are all wonderful truths, and you're on the way. And I then whip out my phone just to show that I'm as cutting edge as they. I have one. Uh, and say, you've grown up when the Weather Channel app is the center of your app collection. That's it. <laughs> when that's the number one app you use, you've grown up. And when you and your friends talk about the weather, well, then you're probably just old. You've gone beyond growing up. You're just old. But knowing the weather is crucial. And it's an expectation that, well, you're mature, aren't you? Therefore, you know the weather. Doesn't Paul have that expectation in us in verse 11? Don't you know the weather? For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. In other words, he's saying... Don't you see what's coming? Lift up your eyes and see what's in the heavens. You know, most of the time we're at this level, aren't we? Our prayers are about this level. Our prayers are about me, the people at my level, my job, the neighborhood, all this. And I don't look up spiritually. That's what Paul wants us to do, doesn't he? He says, look up. There's more going on than just you, your neighbor, your job, your family. Don't you see? The spiritual forces that are in the heavens that have been always against God and yet still continue a battle. It's a futile battle. It's a battle they've already lost, but a battle that's still going on and it's coming over us. You can just see clouds building up in the west sometimes and you know they're coming. So here. So if that battle, the enemies of God still railing against him and railing against us, if that's the forecast, what do we do? Well, Paul, of course, gives us the what to put on. He says, put on the whole armor of God. The many pieces of the armor of God are more than we've got time to take each one on. We'll just take a few of them that follow, in my mind, a, a kind of a logical order. And so we're going to start here uh, with the first one, verse 17, a very simple one, and take the helmet of salvation. That's pretty straightforward, isn't it? How could I not bring this up? You all know I ride motorcycles here, and you know it's sitting here, so let's put it there, da-da-da. Put on the helmet of salvation. Isn't that an interesting place for Paul to take us? Helmet, and that's the one, the only one of them that's associated with salvation itself. But that makes sense, doesn't it? All our other appendages, good. But if you lost a hand, you lost a foot, 
you're still okay. I mean, you'll still function. You cannot lose your head and still do well. And so if salvation has to go somewhere, let it be here. The helmet of salvation. Also, I think there's a, a value. At least in modern motorcycling, this costs the most. Of all the stuff you're going to put on, this is costly. Salvation. Not a cheap thing. Oh, not for us, but for him. The cost of providing for us the helmet that is our salvation cost him everything. God broke the bank when he broke his son to pay for this for every one of us. The helmet of salvation. Now, of course, it's not just a cerebral thing. It's not that we're saved only in mind or that we're saved because we're so clever in our minds. Not that at all. It's faith. It's heart. It's emotion. It's all we do. But it's not a bad place to go, is it? It should invoke your mother. I want you to hear your mother on this one. You're about ready to go out the door, right? And it's kind of stormy. You're about ready to go out the door. Your mother has two questions for you. Her hand is on the doorknob. She's going to first ask you, are you going out? <laughs> kind of obvious. Uh, hands on the door. Well, then, put something on your head. Doesn't that sound like your mother? At least it sounds like my mother. I need more affirmation. Put something on your head. Mom didn't have to spec that out because she's already figuring, well, you should know that. In fact, you shouldn't even have to have me tell you this. I'm wondering what's in your head that I have to keep telling you to put something on your head. But put something on your head. I think Paul takes care of that with us here. Put this on. The absolute certainty of our salvation. Not by our doing. Not by our cost. His cost entirely. Put something on your head as we go out into that storm. So that's not a bad place to start. We'll just set this off to the side here just for a moment. Next, he has this wonderful image. This is verse 16. Take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. Isn't that a great picture? Take up the shield of faith. The shield, now notice a distance, a separation between the shield and ourselves by which we can extinguish the flaming darts of the evil one. It's not fair. It's not even. I bet this last week we were all in a different time place in the many storms that we had. On Sunday night, Monday morning, we had five inches. It maxed out my rain gauge. Our sump pump was running every minute, but we stayed dry by running every minute. My colleague just down the road, one inch of water in his basement, some pump running full blower all the time, still got an inch, there went his carpet. A lady in between our houses, six inches in her basement, some pump running wide open, couldn't keep up. There went more than the carpet. When those kind of inequities happen, isn't it easy to say, why? Why me? And that's exactly the flaming dart of doubt that Satan would love to send us, wouldn't he? Yes. Why if you're saved, would God allow that to happen to you? Isn't that a dart we know very, very well? And sometimes it has struck past faith right into us. And we've begun to burn with that same doubt and raise that same question. God, why is this happening to me? Why did my trees go down? Why did my basement flood? Why did our house have no power? And, 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 and others, nothing. What does faith do? Isn't that the wonderful shield? Faith says nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And Paul has a long list of those things that try. Remember that long list from Romans chapter 8? Neither things past nor present, height nor depth, anything in all creation. We could add neither floods nor trees nor wind or anything else. Nothing separates us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. That shield of faith says he is not given you away. He is with you. And all these things and their fiery darts do not contradict. You are his. So the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, there's one more stop along the way in our clothing, and that is, and, and here have the readiness, excuse me, and, and, and put on then the shoes for your feet, having the readiness given by the gospel of peace. The shoes for your feet the readiness of the gospel of peace. Five inches on our house on Sunday night. You had more. I know I've heard many, many stories much higher than that. 
It rained again on Monday night, we all know that one. Tuesday night, that's when our country got the wind and uh, the storms. And just west of us, it was even worse. We lost power at five o'clock. The storm had already been pummeling us. The rain was going up and, and so was the water in the sump. We lost power at five and we lost it for seven hours. Of course, we didn't know that. Didn't get it back till midnight. We have never in our 22 years living in that house had both heavy rain and no power. So ask me, do we have a backup generator or that little battery backup on the sump pump? Well, it wouldn't be a story if we did. Yeah, you can tell. Da, da, da. So in about five minutes, it's clear this thing is coming up and we got no juice. Da, da, da. So let's start bailing, honey. And so for an hour and a half, we bailed water as fast as we could, carried it up, threw it out the driveway, onto the you know, sidewalk and down, and kept on going. But we can't do this forever. We're old. Uh, and this is not going to work forever. At 7 o'clock, and we've been at this for over an hour and a half, we hear footsteps going through our house. We're in the basement. We can hear footsteps walking through our house. Now, normally, that's not good, is it? You're in your basement. You hear strangers walking around in your house. Well, here's the good news. They were at the same time, our next door neighbor, Rich, and our friend, Deb, from the other side of town, both came in to check on us, walked through the house, figured we must be downstairs. They both come walking down the basement to say, how you doing? Deb C. had power. Their half of Cedar Grove never lost power, not for one instant. They had a little Honda generator and brought it and said, you need this because we got power. And they knew now that our half didn't. And I think it might have run our sump pump. Here's the deal. Rich has one of these, those Generac whole house uh, you know, uh, generators. He's never used it. It's been sitting there next to his house for years because we've never needed one for 22 years. But my neighbor is the kind of guy who put this in years ago and now, by golly, now he needs it. So his house is lit up and he says, no problem. So he gets a 100 foot extension cord, runs it over and says, I'm sure we got juice to run your, your pump. You know what happiness is? Happiness, <laughs> happiness is hearing your neighbor's generac roaring away and hearing your neighbor poke a, as he pokes an orange extension cord through your basement window saying simply, here. The sound of your friends, your neighbors, walking through your house to see if you're okay. Is that not the gospel feet sound? That's a wonderful thing. Whose house needs to hear your feet? Whose house needs you to be bold enough to just come on in? You know, we have no idea if they rang a bell. Why would they? We have no power. I don't think it would work. Just come on in. We got the garage door open because we're throwing water out as fast as we can carry it. Come on in. Whose house has an open door? Maybe no doorbell that works, but a place that needs the sound of your gospel feet. Maybe it's something as open as we worried about you. Maybe it's something as simple as rich one word and an orange extension cord here. But who needs the sound of your gospel feet and your simple offer? We got plenty here. Why don't you have some too? That's a, another piece. And one last one, and that's here at the end. And lastly, take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. Bible commentators always note that the sword is the only offensive weapon, the only thing of doing as opposed to simply responding in this whole list. And that's the idea we need. Mark Twain famously said, everybody talks about the weather, but no one does anything about it. We all nod our heads and say yes. I was thinking about rain gauges, we all were a lot, and I was thinking, wouldn't this be a wonderful rain gauge? You set a little limit on this rain gauge where your family, your home, your sump pump can handle that much. And at that point, when it gets to, let's say, two, a little lid comes flipping down and says, that's it. No more. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Oh, you can take three. All right, you put yours at three and then at three. That's it. Thank you. No more. Wouldn't that be wonderful? It'll never happen. But isn't that what prayer is? Prayer is saying to God, God, you know, we can't take much more. Lord, I can handle five, but that's it. I don't think our house can take seven, eight, ten, twelve. We can't keep up. And God smiles and says, I know that. I've already promised you, I know. And I'll not allow anything to strike you that's more than you can bear. Remember that old wonderful verse and promise from Paul. Nothing has struck you that is not common among men. But God is faithful. 
And he will provide with the temptation a way of escape that you may be able to stand up under it. Now our prayers are simply reminding God of that same promise, isn't it? And our sword of the Spirit is simply knowing that word, that promise, ourselves. It's our way of looking at the clouds and saying, you know, there is a limit to you. Oh, you don't know it, but he does. And he knows exactly where the marking is in our life. And he knows when to say, that's it. That's all there will be. We're not hopeless and weak beneath a cloud and storm that's far beyond us. We're the children of a heavenly father who carries the clouds and rides above them and says to them, that's enough. We're the ones, the disciples, cared for by the one who appeared to be sleeping in the boat in the midst of a storm, but woke and said to the storm simply, enough, be still. And then said to them, why are you worried? And he said the same to us. So, know the weather and dress appropriately. Look at the heavens and see the forces that are arrayed against us. Acknowledge that there's more power against us than we are ourselves. But, here's the good news. Dress appropriately. Put on the helmet of salvation that says, I know I'm saved by his gift and his work. Put out the shield of faith that extinguishes the darts of doubt that would try to question our being saved despite what's going on. Put the gospel shoes on and go to someone or a house that needs to hear your presence in their troubled time. And finally, know that he puts a limit to that which comes to us. He has promised it in his word and we hold that up and we remind him of that in our prayers. Take a look at the weather and dress appropriately. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We rise to confess our faith. We confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We find it on page 174. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you sent us your Son. And by his gift, we have the helmet of salvation, the certainty of being saved as your people, all by your doing. Give us firmly the shield of faith by which we can extinguish the temptations that come after us, the ones that would question whether we can be your child and yet be experiencing such difficulty. Remind us that difficulty is the very way in which salvation came through your Son and that you stand with us no matter what happens. Help us to take that gospel message to places, homes, people that are without it. That whether they know it or not, need to hear our gospel feet and our simple promise that there is more power with us, with you, than we alone need and they may have it too. And finally, Lord, watch over us as you promised. Allow no, nothing to strike us that is beyond our ability to endure, but put a lid and stop to it and carry us standing beside us in all the difficulty around us. All these prayers for those who are in difficulty remind us of those who are hospitalized and those who are ill. Lord, we think of Deborah Roser who is in hospice. 
Joanne Murky, Vic Tegmeyer, Joe Wilds, Joanne Dahmer, Dave Peterson, Rick Allerman, John Block, Mary Wolfel, Jerry Bandumo, Melvin Knack, Landon Zellick, Roger Zimmerman, and Sue Papalardo. Be with all of these and any others who are in difficulty of ill health. Continue to put a healing hand on them, bless the treatments that they receive and those who administer, and give them trust in you while they wait. We also pray for Walter, the brother of a member who is at this time struggling with schizophrenia. Give him peace of mind and also to the uh, family. Give them direction as to how to best care for him. We celebrate the 27th anniversary of Aaron and Jill Jones. Thank you for their 27 years of married life and ask that you would continue to bless them with many, many years to come. And finally, bless also our college students who are returning now to campus. Bless them with good professors, good teachers, with uh, good accommodations of living together with others and, and growing in relationship with them and a clear vision for their vocation and how they'll use their, your, their talents to serve you. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated for the offering. Continue singing the offertory on page 176. be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
who having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With a repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Savior, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith, the life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
then we stand to continue with the post-communion canticle on page 181. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you've refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Please be seated for our last hymn. 